I'll leave Varys here with Phototech Tuesday. And yes, I'm finally back after our last round of travel adventures in Scotland. What an amazing tour. We had just an amazing group of photographers with us. And uh, we also lucked out with some great photo weather. And that doesn't mean that we didn't have rain, but we did have consistently great cloudy skies as well as periods of sunshine. I'm going to be posting more Phototech content covering various travel photography tips in the coming weeks. But today, I thought I'd provide an overview of photos captured during our trip. And these are just the tip of the iceberg from thousands of shots, and I'm still discovering more. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look. So here's my collection of photos from our trip, and just a small taste of the many photo opportunities that presented themselves, and my quirky response to those opportunities. This is not meant to be a travelogue. I, I skip over a lot of details here and concentrate more on a personal collection of images. Anyway, we start, as all Scottish adventures should, in the city of Edinburgh. That's Edinburgh. Don't pronounce the G, and be sure you put that ah at the end. <clears throat> Here's the view from atop Carlton Hill, the highest point other than Edinburgh Castle, which provides a 360-degree view of the city. Here's a lot looking off to the right a little bit more. The city of spires. It's quite, uh, quite beautiful. And really the very best time to climb the hill is sunrise for the best light. Calton Hill is a wonderful park with a collection of neoclassical Greek architecture, monuments, and the Royal Observatory. You can see the dome of the telescope here at the left, a library and museum at the right, and uh, an unfinished reproduction of the Parthenon in Athens. Calton Hill is a reasonably short, though, uphill walk from the Royal Mile at the center of town. Well worth the visit. Anyway, our hotel was on Haymarket Street, which is pretty much in the center of Old Town, and right across the street were some stunning views of Edinburgh Castle. We did spend some time in the castle, but I didn't really get any great photos there. Uh, it was more about kind of walking around the city, and our first day here was used from a good old-fashioned walkabout. Here we are on Victoria Street, filled with tourist shops and restaurants where the Harry Potter shop always has a queue of people waiting to get in. I wander around in the old town center, I found that I'm still quite enamored with the Tintype app on the iPhone, and this became my fun way of visually exploring this beautiful city. I love how the antique photo imagery matched the old town feeling of the Edinburgh streets. Anyway, we walked over to St. Giles Cathedral and found the courtyard in front of the cathedral occupied by a film crew, busy dressing a set for Guillermo del Toro's new Frankenstein movie. This was really kind of cool. They set up like an open air, sort of Victorian era marketplace uh, with stalls and all this kind of little antique curios and, and stuff. Again, the antique quality of the Tintype iPhone app matched the old time props, making it feel like we, we stepped back in time. Very cool stuff here. <laughs> I love this tonics elixirs. Anyway, this while this area was all roped off uh, for building the set, we couldn't actually walk around in, in, the, in the set itself. Uh, we were able to get into um, the cathedral. And this is just a lovely medieval cathedral, really quite beautiful here. I'm going to switch to regular photos here. And uh, just, just gorgeous, uh, really old, sort of started building in the 11th hundreds, I believe. Just beautiful. And so, of course, I had to do one of my in-camera multiple exposure fa fantasies here, just uh, getting kind of more abstract take on the cathedral. Edinburgh is a great walking city, lots of little fascinating streets just outside of the center that offer great photo opportunities. And one of those was a short walk to the west of Edinburgh Castle, and that, that takes you to Dean Village. 
Now, Dean Village traces its origins to Leith Village, which is named after this little river that runs through the town. And it's a milling community founded in the 12th century. Millstones and carved stone plaques with uh, uh, baked goods and stuff uh, sort of commemorate the fact that this was an old, uh, centuries old city. It's characterized by charming stone buildings and and uh, it's also just situated around along this picturesque river, the Leith River, and offers an escape from the city's hustle and bustle. And really a beautiful day exploring Dean Village. And then we walked back uh, a little closer to Edinburgh Castle. There's a cemetery and park grounds that spread out at the base of the hill supporting the castle. And of course, you know, when I, when I see a cemetery, I think infrared. And so I spent quite a bit of time here uh, taking these infrared shots with the castle in the background. Just gives it this other otherworldly kind of feeling. There's also a park that extends beyond the cemetery. And I kind of love this uh, picture with this random uh, modern car kind of sitting there underneath the castle. Here's a Ross Fountain, very famous Baroque sculptural fountain within view of the castle. And there's so many other pictures uh, exploring Edinburgh, but I think now it's time to start our bus tour. So off to our first stop, the little village of Luss. Yes, I can't resist that tintype app. Anyway, Luss is a very picturesque little village that's a favorite of many of the tour guides and provides a restroom stop as well as many photo ops. And I was particularly drawn to this little church. And of course, the church had a cemetery, and that means infrared. So lots of photos here exploring this church and cemetery and the surrounding environments. Looking back, and that's on to more adventures now. We're going to move on, uh, and we come to this Inverary Castle. Now, we, we were warned by the, the uh, tour, uh, the bus driver, our tour uh, guide, that the best shot of this castle was from the bridge that goes over this little river on our way to the castle. Now, we, this is strictly an automobile bridge, uh, there's no walking path on the bridge, and, and the car, the bus could not stop. So we had to move over the bridge. Everybody just took pictures of this scene from the window. I had taken my iPhone and pressed it up against the glass uh, to get this shot. And, of course, the iPhone is, you know, it's, it's, it's a great little camera, but perhaps not quite as uh, uh, detailed resolution as, as one would, would want. So... One of my dirty little secrets is I, I often will take iPhone shots into Magnific, which is an AI upscaling program. Here, I'll show you um, the, here the little detail on the left is the iPhone original. And on the right is the AI Magnific upscaling, which added all this extra detail. And, uh, you know, sometimes it, it kind of uh, reinvents things. So there's some subtle changes here to the castle you can see little extra extra windows show up and the shape of things is a little bit different but in the context of the overall picture this is, is really amazing i'm going to do a phototech tuesday on this whole workflow to show you how to do this anyway here's another shot at this time an in infrared of a uh, closer shot of the castle it's this kind of very cool almost fairy tale castle with four turrets and here's an infrared shot of it was really kind of cool. We saw lots of castles in Scotland. One of them uh, was this um, Kilchurn Castle, which we have this great little view across the lock. Uh, it had great clouds and the light was changing all the time. Really, really some stunning shots there. After this, we went on to Glencoe. And uh, Glencoe is just the, this really classic Scottish Highlands uh, valley with hills and mountains all around it. Really classic. You've seen this used in movies um, all the time. It, it was quite popular with the Outlander series. We see lots of lots of scenic shots, uh, and it's just it's just gorgeous. 
with a lot of craggy rocks and we had dramatic clouds in the sky and this was just just a fantastic place to get landscape pictures and after this we're moving on uh, and uh, on our way to Sky, the Isle of Sky, we stopped at the most photographed castle in Scotland. This is the Eileen Donnan Castle. Here you can see an infrared shot of it. Um, this is just a really, really lovely setting. Very dramatic here. We were there. It was pretty stormy. Clouds coming in and out. And here's an infrared shot. And I found another angle from the uh, uh, other side of the lake here, looking back at the castle. Um, this is, uh, Scotland is damp. Everywhere we walked, well, it was like the soggy moor, um, bog-like conditions everywhere. And uh, we had a bit of rain on our way to Skye, a very stormy drive over the, the bridge to the Isle of Skye before we got to Dunvegan Castle. And uh, this is another very picturesque castle. We had quite the, quite the stormy uh, sky here. Here's an infrared view of it. Um, really interesting gardens and grounds around it. Here's another infrared view. And, uh, you know, I, once I got this shot, I, I could not resist uh, using AI to kind of reimagine it as a a Japanese castle with samurai and uh, AI likes to interpret the infrared as snow so uh, we got this sort of snowy scene anyway a little aside just thought I'd throw that in so uh, after um, after that we went on a, a sort of drive of the northern part of sky around the tip and here uh, we are near the Kilmuir Cemetery and there's this little museum of thatched roof houses and we'll see more of this when we get to the Isle of Lewis and Harris. But anyway, the, uh, the cemetery was quite interesting. And it's the, the, where we find the grave of Flora MacDonald, who was quite famously smuggled the Bonnie Prince Charles to the Isle of Skye after his disastrous defeat at the Battle of Culloden. So uh, we had to pay tribute there. And then we were on to uh, Duntholm Castle. Duntholm. <laughs> say that five times fast. Um, and this was a ruin. Uh, it was a, a castle that uh, is really in a kind of state of complete ruin now, but very interesting. We had extremely windy weather here. Um, you can have these views out into the bay right at the tip of the uh, sky here. And um, really kind of fascinating area. Got a nice little infrared pano here. So we were touring this, the northern tip of Skye and lots of stops. You can see us here, everybody getting out to get their landscape photos. And uh, here's one of our stops was uh, the Old Man of Store, which is this peak, this, this rock. You can kind of see it at the right here. It stands up and uh, it's, it's, it's considered to look like an old man, you know. But uh, anyway, very famous. We arrived there and it was just shrouded in mist. This was kind of a cool stop. And then drove back around and looked back at it. You can kind of see it at the center here, the peak there. Got some really beautiful light, dramatic clouds and um, just wonderful landscape uh, photos around here. Really picturesque and fantastic clouds in the sky. And we did find Highland Coos. These are the classic Scottish Highland cows that are very hairy and have long horns here. You can see the uh, the baby cow here with uh, mom or or dad, I'm not really sure here. But uh, this was, uh, uh, everybody wanted a picture of the coos, so we had great opportunity here with these, that had these coos that had come up close to the fence by the road. Here's the lilt, lilt. Falls, another kind of classic uh, um, feature in uh, Sky that was worth taking a picture of. We eventually made our way down to Portree, which is the main town of Sky. There's a, a very classic view of the harbor here. And on our way back to our hotel, driving back up through the tip of Sky, we took a little shortcut 
across the Quarain, which is a unique uh, kind of rocky ridge in the northern part of Skye. This is, again, this is another iPhone photo um, that has been kind of enhanced with AI. Um, pretty much exactly like the photo, except all the details have been crisped up. Really gorgeous light. This was just a spectacular view. Back at the hotel, right across the street from our hotel in Uig, uh, was this amazing scene, which was just fantastic at sunset. We got all these God's rays, and the, the, the light was just spectacular. So anyway, after this, we're heading off to the Isle of Lewis and Harris, and that meant a, a ferry ride to the largest of the Outer Hebrides Islands, Lewis and Harris. And of course, my first stop was the distillery. And after a refreshing adult beverage, we drove on to the Calendar Stones, the, the oldest standing stones in the UK, um, some 2,000 years older than Stonehenge. And that makes them older than the pyramids. These, uh, and these, <laughs> these stones are just in a very dramatic setting. There's nothing around here except maybe some farms, farmhouses. Um, the sort of dotting the landscape around, but this area was completely barren except for these stones. And there's, it's not really fenced off. You can walk right up to them, uh, get really close. In fact, uh, Bobby, of course, had to hug it and connect with her genetic roots here. You can kind of see here and a little give you a sense of the scale of the larger stone circle. There are actually three different stone circles and uh, we were able to visit all of them. They're all like a 10 minute walk from each other. So um, this is the largest one. Uh, and then there's a, this one was another stone circle with just these few stones, but these stones were fairly large. Um, and there was nobody around. I mean, this was really pretty deserted. The only audience we had were sheep. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I had to get a classic shot of a Scottish Highland sheep. The other uh, interesting photo opportunity here in uh, Lewis and Harris was the Black House Village. Now this this was an actual village that's been preserved. There were actually uh, the last inhabitants moved out in the 1970s. So this was a, was occupied for for a very long time and has been preserved now as a museum and and also a hotel. You can actually rent um, a hut <laughs> here to stay in. It's really kind of cool. And of course, uh, the old time nature of this uh, sort of invited me again to use the Tintype app. And uh, this was a lot of fun just taking pictures of these things. Anyway, after Lewis and Harris, we were back off uh, with another ferry ride to get back to the mainland. And uh, we were in the kind of the heart of the Scottish Highlands, just outside of Inverary, or Inverness, I should say. And here we are at Cotter Castle. This is a really spectacular castle um, that that is actually lived in by Lady Cotter. And half of the year, they they open it to the public, and she goes to live some at one of her other uh, residences, and and then comes back and spends the winter here, I believe. Anyway. Um, we were able to get into the castle and tour it around. There's some amazing gardens around this castle. They're definitely worth um, photography. And of course, I was very, uh, very interested in using infrared here. Some in interesting shots. This, this sculpture is actually a bird feeder. Really kind of interesting. Anyway, really classic uh, gardens. And there's a, there's a maze. There's a maze garden. At the center, there's this sculpture of the Minotaur here. Uh, really kind of fascinating, wonderful place, really enjoyed it, and uh, took lots and lots of pictures there. You're not really seeing all of them, but I thought it, here's the only plant I found that, that looked like it had gotten the memo that, that fall had started. Um, anyway, after our visiting castle and on our way back to our hotel in Edinburgh, we stopped to visit the Kelpies, and this is this massive sculpture that you can see from the freeway driving by. Um, but uh, we, we stopped to, to visit it. You can see the scale of this thing. 
The Kelpies uh, in Scottish mythology are water creatures that live under the water. And when they come up above water, they assume the shape of a horse, where uh, it's said that they will uh, attempt to get people to ride them and then take them underneath the water to their death. So the Kelpies here uh, in this massive public artwork. Again, the uh, Tintype app really had a lot of fun with that on this trip. So my last shot here, the amazing Kelpies. And we're finally back home to Edinburgh and our tour is finished. So I bid you all good night here. And uh, hopefully you will be interested in joining us uh, in Scotland for our next adventure there. Well, that's it for now, and I hope you enjoyed this little slideshow. Perhaps this inspires you to consider a trip to Scotland. Uh, we are definitely going back. Send us an email if you, and let us know if you're interested. Um, anyway, um, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.